So today we're gonna to talk about something a little different, social media and landscape photographers. Social media. There's a lot of frustration in the landscape photographer community about social media and how it has changed over time. The reach is down, engagement is down, there's more videos in your feed through the form of reels or stories. You're starting to not see the people that you follow. You're starting to see more people that you don't follow showing up in your feed. You're starting to see more ads. Social media certainly isn't like it was back in the day. Am I old enough to say that? I think so. So whether it be Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, the new thread social media app, Twitter, all of those have started to change and they continue to change every day. But that's just how things are. Newspapers changed over time, radio changed over time, TV changed over time, and now the internet and social media is changing as time goes on. I have a few strategies that I use to help keep those changes from being so frustrating and find ways I still get enjoyment from those communities and still let my work get out there and be seen, even if it's not seen by quite as many people as it used to be. So I'm approaching this topic today as a landscape photographer in general. It doesn't matter whether you're a hobbyist just getting started, whether you're an advanced amateur, or even a person that's doing this as a side hustle professionally or moving towards full-time landscape photographer. I'm gonna to start to approach this less business-minded and just social media in general. I'll probably save a business-minded focus for a future video if there's interest in that, but today's video is really just social media in general for the landscape photographer, regardless of whether you're doing it as a hobby to the full-time professional. So if social media is somewhat frustrating to you or that's what you're hearing in landscape photography communities, why should you even consider social media and why do you not abandon the platforms altogether? And really, for me, it's because it's still the best free organic reach out there. It's the easiest way for people to have a chance at seeing my photos and a great way for me to engage with other members of the landscape photography community on a regular basis. With that said, there can be a lot of pressure to post on social media at certain times or a certain amount of times or anything like that. In a lot of cases, it's just really not that important. Post when you have an image that you're proud of to post, share it and get it out there. Try to create engaging content, whether it be great images or good descriptions, and just put your work out there. It's a great platform to do so, and it doesn't matter if the engagement and reach have changed from what it was two years ago to now. The same problem is affecting all photographers, so it's not like you are just being singled out for it. And more people are seeing you work through that opportunity of social media than you might otherwise have. Don't get too frustrated by the amount of times you're supposed to post. Just post when you have something to post and go from there. Now, one thing I find is that I feel a lot of pressure on my actual, say, let's use Instagram for example, Instagram posts to look very well polished. I don't wanna post iPhone images there or anything like that, and I get that. And I even feel a certain amount of pressure to making sure what goes in my main Instagram feed is something that I'm reasonably proud of and want to have out there as a representation of my work. And for those that feel that pressure but still want to be active on social media and find ways to engage with people, I highly recommend Instagram stories for that. I am way more laid back on Instagram stories. You'll see iPhone shots there. You'll see just how my day is going. And these are all ways to help build those relationships on these online communities and make those connections a little stronger. So by all means, take advantage of all the elements that a social media platform brings. And a lot of people have been getting frustrated because the reels come through, Instagram pushed reels, a lot more video content these days. Again, that's just sort of how things are moving. There is opportunity to combine your still photography with videos. People love to see behind the scenes and they don't have to be completely polished. You don't have to go off and use that trending audio in order to be popular. People would love to see the behind the scenes of your work, whether it's how you packed your bag, whether it's you standing behind the camera photographing something. It's an interesting way to do things, but you don't have to do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. But it is a good way to help build that engagement and just be social with the online community. So one of the things I see in social media and with landscape photographers and photographers in general is a lot of photographers treat it as a one-way street. They wanna post the image and just expect people to come like it, comment on it, engage with it, and see it in their feed. So it's really just sort of post it, forget it, other than sort of watching, am I getting likes? Is my like count going up? Am I getting comments? Am I getting hearts and fire and all of that stuff? And really, I think social media becomes a much better tool, much better way for your work to be seen if you put the social back in social media. And I have two tips for how to do that. So my first tip is stop treating social media as a one-way street and actually engage with other landscape photographers. Just like we want people to engage with our content, we can help drive some of that by engaging with other photographers' content. So instead of just hitting that like button or the heart icon or anything like that on an image, take some time and actually leave a thoughtful comment. And this isn't just the fire emoji or the heart emoji or awesome tones, bro. Actually leave something that's interesting, something that's thoughtful that shows you looked at the image and appreciated the image. What did you like about the image? Maybe you visited that area before and thought, oh, well, that's a really cool shot from that area. I've been there before. 
mention that. But make an effort to take a little time each day to hop on, find some photographs you like that are coming across your feed and engage with them, comment on them. And another great opportunity to do this is if you're into Instagram stories or Facebook stories at all, is take a look at those. There's some really great behind the scenes where you can really get what's really driving a photographer and see some really cool stuff about them and see what really makes them tick. Comment on those stories. That'll help build engagement and it sort of turns it from this one way, let me push content and then wonder why my photos aren't being seen or people aren't acknowledging them or anything like that. But treat it as a two-way street and reciprocate and make comments and start building those online relationships with other photographers and really put the social back in social media. By you starting this conversation, you can help make the whole landscape photographer community better. We can all bring each other up. Tip two is respond to every single comment you get on your photo. I don't care how big of a following you have, how big of a landscape photographer you are. If someone has taken the time to stop and comment on your photo, take the time, find the time in your day to go through and acknowledge those comments. If you're really pressed for time, uh, I guess a like would do, but ideally what you wanna do is respond to that comment. Maybe it's just a quick thank you, but really if you have some way to forward that conversation and see, let them see that you really read that comment and reply to it as something thoughtful, that just helps build and make the landscape photography community stronger. That's a good way to help turn this back into a two-way street where it's a community bringing everything up as opposed to just pushing content out there. I'm amazed at how many times I see landscape photographers with mid-sized followings just never even reply to comments that they get and then wonder why they're not getting engagement or why they're getting fall off on their reach and people following and liking and commenting on their stuff. Take that extra time. It's part of a community. It's putting the social back in social media. So again, those are my two tips. Super fast, pretty easy. The way I do this is I usually have 10, 15 minutes of downtime. Maybe I'm standing in line at the store waiting to check out. I have time to pop open social media, scroll through, look at some images and comment and reply to stuff on my own posts. And while that might not necessarily directly raise your reach or your engagement back to the levels we saw several years ago when Instagram and Facebook were newer, it will help build the community and make it a stronger community and build those relationships. The other side effect of this is earlier on, I mentioned how a lot of times we don't see people that we follow. You know, I follow a lot of people. I certainly don't see them all the time, but I've certainly noticed a correlation between the people's posts I interact with, whether it be their post and leaving comments or their stories that they're posting. If I actually interact with those, I tend to see their content way more often. They'll be the first in my stories. They'll be some of the first images I see in my feed. So you can sort of manipulate the algorithm in the feed by interacting with content. It'll pick up the you like content from this person and show it to you. So it sort of does have that nice little side effect of helping you sort of tailor your feed to what you want to see. So as a landscape photographer, don't let the negatives of social media keep you from building and engaging with the community online. There's a lot of positives out there and with just a little bit of effort of making it a two-way street instead of a one-way street, we can really make it a better place. So focus more on the community and less on the likes and the metrics. There's much more to social media than just that. So this is a slightly different topic for me today, but as much as I hear about social media and landscape photographers online in various forms, I thought it was worth talking a little bit about it. So again, if you like today's video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you wanna see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, and mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And thank you for watching.